Good evening. Can we gather around? First, I want to thank you all for coming out this evening. Uh, this exhibition I'm extremely excited about. Uh, first, I want to just start off by saying congratulations to Fabiola. The work looks gorgeous. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Eric Pryor. I'm the president of HSA. And uh, this is a proud moment for me because my background is visual arts. And when I had the opportunity to come here and take over as president of HSA, I'm probably the first president from a non-performing arts background. I met my artistic director, Alfred Pricer. Alfred, would you come up here for, with me, please? For one of the first things we talked about was creating a platform, a stage for visual art. And we were very fortunate that one of our board members, Dr. Henry Jarecki, underwrote these walls and these lights, which gave us the stage, it gave us a, a proper platform to exhibit fine art. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you for coming here. As you can see, this was Eric's vision to turn this into a bona fide art gallery, and it's all that. This extraordinary exhibit by Fabiola, and uh, I, I'm just so proud to have this kind, of, this kind of work at HSA, this level of work at HSA. It's a fantastic thing. My name is Jonathan Patton. I'm the director of visual arts here at HSA. Um, I'm very honored and proud to not only curate this show uh, presented by Fabiola, but also honored and proud to be a part of HSA and the uh, rich history it has. Uh, we're in our 50th anniversary, and uh, the title of this show is called Rewriting History, and it's so poignant and it's so right on time. It's more about rewriting history. Fabiola has generated this body of work that speaks of that. It speaks of rewriting this idea of history and how we approach race and how we deal with one another. And uh, like I said, I couldn't be in a better position to introduce Fabiola Jean-Louise because her work is remarkable. You'll hear, uh, you'll hear a lot about her in the future. So if there are any art collectors out here tonight, feel free to, to talk to us because she will be a collectible artist in the near future. So she is a collectible artist right now. Uh, without further ado, Ms. Uh, Fabiola Jean-Louise. So um, first I want to start by thanking everyone for being here and HSA for um, making this dream come true. Um, I started the paper sculptures this summer. So this is really special for me because I've, I've done that. I've accomplished what I set out to do. Um, <laughs> last August I was watching the news, which is very rare for me. And uh, it was yet another brown, black person who had been um, killed. And at the time when I saw the, the news, I was already thinking, I, I, I want to do a body of work that's going to speak about that. And then uh, I don't know what clip it was that I saw in the news, but I said, wouldn't it be awesome to rewrite all of this crap? But I took that anger and, and I wanted to channel, channel it into something that would be beautiful um, in talking about black history, uh, what it means to be a, a black person. And not just in America, because when we think about black history, we think about American history. Um, but black history is, is, is it's everywhere. Because I call this series uh, time travel. It's more like a time travel for me. Um, because our experience as black people is not linear. And no, one, no one's experience is linear, right? So I'm interested in looking at what the oppressed would look like in the oppressor's position. We often think that freedom is you know, something that is so obviously big, but we take for granted that sometimes freedom looks like something really small, like playing the violin. And moving forward with the series, this is the first installation, which means that by the time it's all done, uh, I hope to have at least 15 to 20 gowns, uh, which means that the images themselves will be about 40 to 50 images. The point of the series is to take time periods and the present 
and bring them together so we can really look and see what, how much has this changed and, and how much are our lives being valued. I want to do this story through paper for a lot of reasons. But I'm thinking about the Constitution. I'm thinking about how words hurt. And I'm thinking about how transformative words are and paper is, and how if we put it in a ball, we can change things. So I'm, I'm talking about hope um, and love and resilience and beauty. And beauty is the vehicle to talk about a story that's very traumatic. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.